Welcome back everyone to a new Morales video and in this one we're gonna display the coins that are created by the same creator. So when we paste the creator's address in this field and hit submit we're gonna display the tokens and the coins. So for this example this address has created decentralized USD, Tether, uh, we have USDC and wrapped Ether. And we are displaying them beautifully using the Web3 UI kit that Morales provides us. Um, and I've used tracemove.io to get the coin list from here. I took this creator's address from Tether right here. So we can try with another one. We can take this Ditto Stake Aptos. And if we copy this and paste that in here, hit submit. And we can see that this creator has created these two coins. So redeemable Ditto discount token and Ditto staked Aptos. Now this is pretty cool. You can see who created which token on Aptos network with just a few lines of code. Stay tuned and I will show you how. Hey, I'm Joseph, your Web3 instructor from Sweden. I've been into crypto since 2017 and have been building in the space since 2021. In my free time, I enjoy playing paddle, going to the gym or hanging out with my dog. I always try to enjoy some good pancakes, but that's for another time. Now let's get back to the video. All right, to get started, let's have a folder, the root folder, the get aptos coin by creator. And within that one, let's create a backend and a frontend folder. We're gonna initialize npm and then install node fetch. We're gonna install express.env and course. And then we're gonna add the .env file to the root of the backend folder. And we're gonna add our Morales API key. Now, if you don't have one already, make sure you get one by going to morales.io slash pricing. You can see our different plans. We have the free one, which is good for starting out, but if you want to take your dApps to the next level, I highly recommend you to go with the pro plan. You will get more compute units. You, you will get more daily uh, requests, unlimited daily requests, to be honest. So you get so much more by just going with the pro plan right here. And once you've done that, we can go to the top and click login. And it will take us to our admin page. From here, let's go to Web3 APIs. And this is where we have our API key. Make sure you keep this private and to yourself. And that's why we're adding it inside the .env file and then we can import this and use it inside our index.js file now this file this server is going to be a, an express server so we're going to require that we're going to need node fetch our express server is going to be on port 5001 and then let's also import course and dot env this right here is how we can get the api key from the dot env file by process dot env and then uh, adding our variable name and then the variable name in which we want to store it within this file. And then we add it in here when we create our options object. At the bottom, we can start listening to our server, which is on port 5001, we specify it right here. And then we just console log that we're listening for API calls. And this server is only gonna have one endpoint. It's gonna be on slash get coins. And when our frontend client goes to this endpoint, that's when we're gonna do a request to the Morales API and we're gonna pass along this address that we get from the frontend client we can get it we can extract it from the from here like so and once we get the response back we're just gonna send it back to the client with the status of 200 and if something goes wrong then we're sending back status 400 and we're also console logging the error message right here within our backend server and that's all we need for our server. Now let's create a front-end client, which is gonna be a Next.js application. So make sure you set that up correctly. And besides that, we're gonna install the Web3 UIKit core and icons, and also Axios, because we're gonna need that to do our requests from our front-end to our back-end server. And you can actually see how clean our application is. Inside index.js, we only have this main component that we're rendering. So if we go to that one, we can see that we import uh, use state, we have Axios, we have image, then we have copy and illustration from the Web3 UI kit core and icons respectively. We have our CSS file, 
we have the Morales and the Aptos logo. Now we're not gonna cover the CSS file, but I'm gonna link to this GitHub repo in the description below. Make sure you go to that link, clone the repo and take a look at the styling if that's interesting to you. Otherwise, let's just continue and you can see that we are creating three state variables right here. We have the creator address, which is an empty string to begin with. We have a result, it's an empty array, and then we have show result, which is set to false. So we have two functions. We have the handle change function, which we call when you paste or write or type something inside the input field. So we're gonna take the value that you type in and we're gonna store it inside this state variable right here. Because we're gonna want to use this address later on in the other function right here. And this handle submit function, we run this when you click the submit button. And what we want to do here is, as I said, take this address that we got from the input field and stored in this state variable. And we're gonna use that and send it as a parameter to our backend server. And our backend server to do the request, as I said before, we're gonna use Axios. It's a get request on slash, uh, on localhost colon 5001 slash get coins, because that is the endpoint we created on our backend server. And once we get the response back, we can both console log it and we can also uh, store it, which is what we do in this state variable right here, the empty array. And then we set show results to true because now is when we want to display our results. And down here is where we're rendering everything. So let me, let me just minimize this SVG right here. So we have the logos, uh, the Morales logo right here. We have the Aptos logo right here. And then we have the input field. Uh, which has this on change function, the handle change for us to store uh, the input field and the address that we put in there. And then we have the button and that has a non click function, the handle submit, and that helps us do the request. So once show result is true, we're gonna render all this below. And we start by mapping through that the result variable. And for each coin in there, we're gonna create all this right here. So essentially we have a section that takes an illustration, which is uh, this right here. So if I take, for example, this same one and paste that in. So this is the illustration itself. And then we are uh, adding the creator's address, for example. We have symbol, we have decimal, we have time created. And that's all this data right here that we're displaying below that. So that's pretty cle clean. And um, the Web3 UI kit using this illustration uh, and this copy right here, which is this icon right here, that makes things very easy for us. So we can just add all the data we, we're getting back and focus on uh, displaying what we want to display, but how we are displaying it, Web3 UI Kit makes that very easy for us. And that's basically all we need. If we don't get anything back, we are just sending this Bean Boy uh, step one illustration. I'm gonna show you what that is, but before that, I just want to tell you that, that this is all the code we essentially need. We don't need more lines than this. No more hassle. It's very quick. It's very easy and it's very straight to the point. So let me show you once again. Let's take. Um, so let's actually do this. Let's take my own address because I know I haven't created a coin yet. And there we have it. We get this bean boy because I haven't created one yet. And then if we go back and, and let, let's uh, let's do this. and take another one. I'm not sure which one. Let's take Mojito and copy this and go back, paste that in, hit submit, and there we have Mojito. So if I open the inspector console, we can see how the response looks like. So this is actually the data dot result that we are mapping through and storing inside our state variable. And you can see that the data is very clean. Everything we display right here is something we get from this uh, item right here. So you, as you can see, it's very easy. It's very straight to the point. And if you have any questions, make sure you post them in the comment section below. Otherwise, just smash the like button and I hope I will see you in the next video.